Hello and welcome back to the Quick Slant on Green Bay Packer Nation and GreenBayPackerNation.com. Today on the Quick Slant, we are going to kick, kind of kick off our draft pick projection series. So we're just basically going to take what the uh, professional analysts are saying about who the Packers might draft, and we're going to take a close look at each of these guys and see what we think. So stick around. You and I both know that there are a ton of mock draft projections out there, and um, most of them are going to be wrong. So, But we're going to have some fun with this, uh, and I think we're going to start out with with what I would consider the, the best starting point is the N at NFL.com's own analysts. There are four analysts for NFL.com, and uh, let's take a look at their projections for who the Packers might pick with their first pick in the, N in the 2018 NFL Draft. Let's start out with Mike Hughes, a cornerback out of Central Florida. Um, he's 5'11", 185 pounds. Um, he does a great job in open field tackles, which, of course, as we all know with cornerbacks, it's that's pretty important. Um, he had four interceptions in 13 games. One, one of the things that really surprised me about that stat was I watched several highlights from of the Central Florida versus Auburn um, game, and Auburn just flat did not even target um, Mike Hughes' side of the field. So I kind of suspect that that is probably the, the case with a lot of the teams that came up against Central Florida. They just kind of went away from Mike Hughes' side of the field. And so the fact that he got four interceptions on the season, not too shabby, I would think. Uh, what really, though, impressed me about Mike Hughes was, and what I suspect the Packers might consider him as a pick for, is his punt return ability. Um, we'll show a few clips here where he, he actually had two run backs for a touchdown and he averaged 6 16.6 .6 yards per punt return and that was pretty impressive he he looked good in open field on punt returns made some nice moves it never really had just an obvious open lane never never caught the sideline and just went he just he did a lot of stuff where he weaving in and out of players and and found his way downfield. Uh, so I was pretty impressed with his punt return ability. That said, I just don't see the Packers picking uh, uh, what I would consider a fairly good cornerback only f for er, only because he can contribute in the punt return game. So I I just don't see this as a pick for the Packers. The second projection from the NFL.com analysts comes from actually from Buck, Bucky Brooks, who uh, I honestly respect Brooks's analysis. I, I don't always agree with him, but I respect his analysis to to a large degree. However, this particular pick surprises me a little. He has picked Arden Key, a defensive end out of LSU. Now. Key was one of the leading sackers in in the SEC. However, as I watched a lot of the the highlight reels from Arden Key's play, not only this season, 2017, where he actually had a bit of a slump, but also from the 2016 season where he was he his stats show he was outstanding. Some of the surprising things that caught my attention was that uh, offensive coordinators were coming up against Arden Key with, with running backs and tight ends, trying to block him with, with running backs and tight ends. It just seemed like the scheme was wrong, and that was why he had such a stellar season in 2016. Now, there are a lot of things that I think Key does well. Uh, he's, he's, he's tall. Six, he's 6'6". 240 pounds. He's very tall, 
Not very heavy for a guy that tall, to be honest, but he's very, very fast, very quick. Um, coming up against defensive tackles in the NCAA, he blew by a lot of people and got a lot of sacks. Um, I think at, at the NCAA level, Arden Key was, um, he was big enough to overpower tight ends and running backs, but fast enough to outwit defensive ta or offensive tackles. However, when you get to the, the NFL level, that is a different game altogether. These, these offensive tackles are going to be almost as quick as Key is. Now, uh, the, the one thing that I thought he might contribute to an NFL team and to the Packers, perhaps, is uh, because he's so tall, you know how many times we had trouble getting to the quarterback? He often will, he's got a, a lot of range in, in, his, uh, in his vertical leap ability, so he often would swat down passes. That's one thing that I think the Packers missed last season. We didn't get a lot of pressure on the quarterback, but we also didn't swat down a lot of passes that we should have swatted down. Um, and that, that could derail some pretty key third down conversions. However, just watching Arden Key and, and um, the highlights he had from the 2016-2017 season, I was not that impressed. So I've just got to feel like Bucky Brooks has seen some stuff that I'm just not seeing in, the, in these highlight reels. So I, I, I don't agree with this pick at all. I wouldn't see the Packers picking Arden Key at all. Okay, now we come to a, a, a pick, a projected pick that I think would be, that, that I'm honestly very excited about as a Packer fan. Um, if Josh Jackson, this cornerback out of Iowa, were to drop to the Packers and and the Packers picked him, if Gutekunst pulls the trigger on Josh Jackson, I would be ecstatic. Um, for starters, he once played wide receivers, so as a defensive player, that gives him a lot of insight into the mind of a wide receiver, what things they're trying to do to get themselves open, and I think that plays into his stellar career at Iowa. At Iowa, he was number one in the Big Ten in pass breakups, and he had eight interceptions for 168 return yards. Outstanding. He was amazing. Um, at times, he didn't get his head turned around on passes like I would like to see, like I would like to see him do. Uh, but that I think is something that can be coached into him pretty easily. This guy, I don't know if you if you have followed the Big Ten much, but um, Josh Jackson had pick sixes back to back games in in uh, against Ohio State University, where they where the Iowa won an upset, and the following week when they met the Badgers, he had a, another pick six out of the gates, the very first defensive play out of the gates. So it, uh, let's be honest, Ohio State University, Wisconsin Badgers, these were good, good teams. And this is a very exciting player. He has a lot of range. That's what I love about uh, Josh Jackson is he's got a lot of range. I'm going to show you a clip right now that shows it really kind of encapsulates everything I love about Josh Jackson. Um, he he has great leaping ability and great hands and makes a one-handed snag to, to stop a, an offensive drive. Um, I, I just think he's a, he would be a great pick, and I, 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 I kind of would be surprised if he was still available at pick 14. But if he is, I would be thrilled if Gutekunst were to pick Josh Jackson. So the final pick in this early mock draft from the NFL.com analysts is for Vita Vea. And he's a defensive tackle from Washington. He actually looks quite good in certain situations. If you watch 
you, if you watch the highlights, this guy is amazing. He, he has great hand technique, great footwork, and takes on double teams and controls them. It, he's really quite an amazing athlete for a defensive tackle. However, if you watch highlight reels f for a, a full game, um, it's clear that he's a big boy and he starts to wear down as the game progresses. He does look like he takes, it takes snaps off, which I'm honestly not... I'm not entirely adverse to a defense, someone that big taking snaps off. I think when you're that big, you have to recognize when you're not even involved in the play and you take your, your moments there where you rest a little bit um, and then you give it everything you've got on those plays that you recognize you're, you're critical in that play. So I don't necessarily have a problem with a guy like... Uh, Vita or Mike Daniels, for instance, taking a play off here and there just because he's not going to be involved in the play anyhow. He might as well conserve his energy because these are big guys that have a lot of mass to move for a long period of time throughout the game. However, um, I think that, that Vita would work well as kind of a... Um, a player who might be a rotational player, uh, he would be, I can see him being really great with Mike Daniels rotating in and out. However, for a first round pick, you don't pick a guy who is a rotational player. You're looking for that guy who's going to play the majority of the snaps and is going to be great at it. And I just don't think at this point that, that he has the ability to play a lot of snaps in the NFL, much less a lot of, I mean, he, he struggled with a lot of snaps in the NCAA. So I, unless some team, you know, unless, if, if this analyst is correct and the Packers pick him as uh, their first pick in the draft, um, they would have to be confident that they could maybe help him trim down and maintain that high energy throughout a game. I just don't see that happening, so I don't really expect that this is going to be the Packers' first pick. So let me know in the comments what you think about each of these guys. What do you think about the Packers' first pick? And if you have not subscribed, if you're new here and haven't subscribed yet, definitely hit the subscribe button and tap that bell notification so you get notified the next time we post a video.